Hey YouTubers, Dizzy here with some info for you on how to mod your XCOM 2 game. So I got the Steam library opened up, it's on my E drive. And if you go into the Steam apps, common, and then to your XCOM 2 folder, you can find the installed files for your game there. And then you're gonna have to go down a little bit further into the XCOM game and then config section and that's where you can find the INI any files for the game. Now XCOM 1 was moddable and you can find a lot of things on sites like nexusmod.com and you can use their Nexus Mod Manager to install the game uh, mods and everything. But now in XCOM, XCOM 2 we have greater modding capability that all the NI, 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 NIIs, <laughs> INIs are available to everybody to mess around with. All you need is a simple text viewer, so you can open up with uh, Notepad, or you can open it up with what I like is Notepad plus plus. And I'll actually open. I have some open up right now, so let me switch over to that screen. And let's get into some of these details, so you can kind of get a good feel on how to do this. If you've never done this before, uh, I hope that this is a good intro to just messing around with some of the game core files. I will see many many bigger mods coming out on sites like nexus mod in the future where they're going to be tweaking many of these ini files and because it's all right here and available to you we're going to see these really quick like there's not going to be need for kind of that you know um how should i say hacking or anything uh, not quote quote unquote hacking but the deeper knowledge doesn't really need to be there because even in some of these situations, everything's labeled really well, and every, there's even comments on how to mess with things. The guys in, with XCOM at FireAxis were really all about it. They, they, the capabilities there, it's in the workshop, so let's get to it. One of the things I wanna show you right away is in the default game data, so that's over here, that, and, and again, I just right click it, and I either open with net, uh, edit with Notepad++, I highly recommend it, it looks like this. Uh, you can have many notepad documents open up along the top. If you have never used it before, you will be pleasantly surprised. It does a lot of awesome things. Or otherwise, you can just open with notepad, uh, which looks a little less pretty. But, you know, it's it's available if you don't have that right away. Uh, plus, notepad++ plus plus is free, so why not? Just go get it. Uh, anyway, so continuing down. So default game data. Let's look at something that you might be confused about right away that, that the squad size in XCOM 2 is a little small. And yeah, I agree. It's a little small. Uh, so you can actually adjust that and you can add that you can add whatever, however many uh, squad size you want. You can support, I, I, from what I understand, dozens even of squad uh, members to join in. Uh, I believe the game adds in more squad size as the game goes on, but you start off with four. So all we have to do is hit control find and then do the max soldier on mission, search for that point. Max soldiers on mission. Ah, uh, not, not doing it, not getting it. So hold on, let me look for soldiers. There it was, oh, I passed it. And put max in front max soldier class so here we go so max soldiers on mission i don't know i think i might have just spelled it wrong anyway sorry uh so there we there, there's that point right there i'll highlight it for you and it's set to four and if you set that to a different number that's what you'll have pretty simple as, as far as you know individual mods to the game as the game continues down its war path of modding there's gonna be more information out there to do specific things. There's gonna be more modders doing specific things uh, in groups. One of the greatest mods created for the original XCOM game was The Long War, and that changed a lot of things. We're, like, we're, we're looking at changing uh, team sizes, difficulties, enemies on the map. But in this one, you can do that all to yourself. You can, you can pick what you want out of that, out of that size, um, out of that, uh, what was great in Long War. And that is 
fantastic. That is amazing. I've seen only very few games do some some like this. So continuing on, sorry to get a little bit long winded there. Uh, so let's say you want to change the health of a character or uh, an enemy. It's in the game data care stats, character stats. So I'll go back to the screen here. I'll show you. It's just it's as simple as going into the character stats, adding it. it. There it is. And let's get a little zoomed in there. Um, and let's find this. So so let's so here I'm on a sectoid. So that's what I looked for. And here are the base stats. Armor chance, zero, armor mitigation, armor piercing, critical chances, defense, dodges, their HP they come in at, the mo their mobility, their offense, their side offense. I mean, we're looking at the whole shebang right in front of you. And you can change, like, here's the XP, how much you get per score. Um, gosh, there's just so much to this. And, and followers, like, they went into detail in these INIs. And they obviously use it in the game to their, you know, to make the game work. But being available and not hidden in a config or encrypted in some kind of file is exactly what all modders only can dream about at night. So, so there, and there's their HP. Let's make it a four, three. Screw it. These sectoids are done. They're gonna get murked by the rookie soldier by the worst weapons you have. You know, like so. Let's. So I'm gonna leave it a seven because I like to have a little challenge. But that's how easy it is. Um, one of another great ones I saw out there is to make your Sky Ranger fly faster. Because there is some time to get from Intel point to Intel point in the game. So all you have to do is go to the game board, uh, default game board, find Sky Ranger, and find in time uh, max flying speed. And how high they go. I mean, you can go down to the point where you can seriously mess this game up. You can change things like flags. Um, where that image is. So let's say, let's just go there. Uh, I think if we can, we can just, so UI library, common country flags dot UI Scotland. Let me see if that's easily accessible before I, I didn't check this out. So apologies that I'm doing it on the fly, but this is live ladies and gentlemen. So let's see configs, country flags. I don't see it in the config section. It's in there somewhere. You can definitely change some fun things in here, uh, considering it's looking at image that could be that could be an online thing or it could be stuck in some kind of actual um, wrapped up section. But in either case, you can change a lot of things. Let's not even talk about um, that side of it. Let's let's look at stuff that's just an easy one or zero kind of deal here. I mean, the world region you have different possibilities what those uh, multipliers score drops another one that you can do and this one's a fun one i saw out there is you can change the rate that beards and hats spawn with your character so if you go to the default uh, name list and that's the name of that one really simple file new soldier hat chance 1.5 you make that a one they're always going to may have a hat new soldier upper face uh, Prop chance, props, beards, colors. Yes, there's colors. A civilian hat chance. Let's give every civilian hats. Awesome. Let's give mm, all the civilians beards. Let's make a beardy game. Beardy hat game. Let's do it. That's what's possible. Man, this game is so wide open. It's insane. Um, even down, like, and I'll show you another one that's really cool, is enemy spawn rates. So enemies spawn in uh, these group sections. So here's like the section called Advent Encounter uh, Definitions for All Missions. The Advent Time 2 Standard. So there'll be three enemies, uh, two st enemies standard. Three enemies standard. And I'm pretty sure you can't necessarily change these names because they will, they're kind of in the system. They're looking for these names, the actual IDs. But screw it. Let's make the actual spawn count not X2. Let's make it four. Four, six, and eight. If you really want to, Want a, want a difficult game, you, you, you can multiply these pretty high. And that's exactly what stuff like The Long War did. They made these spawn groups that, because you know, they come in in the game, they're gonna, they know they're going to spawn an enemy in a certain situation, and they're going to they're gonna find this group, and they will either random it or have a very set uh, amount of, of spawn rates here. 
or, or spawn the encounter ID. They, they'll have probably that set, I would assume. But then we can change at least what comes in that group. And then they'll just pick from that group, right? Because these are, these are those IDs co uh, coincide with the enemies that are going to be spawning. So here's here's the character type or exclusion types, Advent Global. That's what I'm speaking to. So what they would actually include in that group. And you can even tweak that. You know, you could say that normally for all standards, I want bosses and big guys. And I'm talking, we're talking like a super hard game. Um, but it's possible. Anything is possible in this one and in this uh, XCOM. And it's available right away to you. So you can do whatever you want. You can get out there. You, you, you do have to figure out how to wrap that up nicely and make it worth, work with something like Nexus Mods. Um, which there are plenty of videos out there showing you how to make that available and how to make those tweaks as an installer. And then you too can become a modder. You, can, you too can make the number one hitting mod on Nexus Mods and kickstart your way into a, a development career with gaming. You know, who knows where it could take you if you have the aptitude and experience. There's other things out there. We have default class data. We have different, uh, different weapon data. So if, as you can see, we have different damages there. You can change what the spread is, crits, pierces, I mean, psi attacks. Like they even comment these things in for you so you don't have to really guess. And everything's named to easily read. Character stats we were looking at before. You can look at skills. You can add different skills. And if you look at my video earlier of the day one mod pack uh, that they had, they had three mods. They had a different skill set that you can add to the game. Uh, a class called the leader class they added enemies to the game and if you wanted to do that if you wanted to do these things you will be uh, you will have to add them to these INI files so this is the start of how to do anything in XCOM anything mod related you're gonna need to add these like let's say you add a new SMG you're gonna have to put a stub in here that defines that SMG and then the the where to find the the image and how it how it's used and everything will be defined here but that'll be reaching out to the different sections of the game to uh to use it you know the or the the different sections of the file system to use it so the images for let's say new enemies uh the 3d model and where that's located and all of that is available to you from what it appears right out of the box so if you're looking for a game you could really run with that's is seemingly pretty easy to get get fresh with, you know, like if you're if you're a fresh modder looking for that not so hackish approach, this is it. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys get in there and make some cool things. Once again, Dizzy with DXL and you guys have a great day.